Happy Saturday. My name is Eric. I'm making faces that you can talk to. It's a web interactive storytelling platform, WISP. Let me demo. Let me demo recent progress. All right. So I made something that nobody asked for except for me. It's a, a slider with two thumbs on it. So you can move this thumb over here and you can move this thumb over here. It won't let you cross the stream, so to speak. It won't let you pull this over the, the left slider, and the left slider can't pull over the right. And I made it myself with my own two hands and my, my squirrely little brain. Um, this one I made earlier, and I used a lot of the code I, I wrote for this simpler, more ordinary slider to create this one. All right, so why do I have these two sliders? Well, first off, uh, I think I'm going to get rid of this one, the auto adjust, because I believe that this this slider here will be enough to do everything the user needs, and it won't be that hard. Uh, this was supposed to kind of help make the process of adjusting audio faster, but I think it just adds complexity. It's not really needed. These sliders will adjust the start and end points for playing audio on a, a specific speech clip. So here's the design I had in wireframe that I'm going to try to realize. You've got uh, an audio clip here and you drag these endpoints so that it just tightly gets close to the start and end of the speech and then when you're done you click next. Um, this auto adjust was supposed to be kind of a tricky clever way to to set these guys automatically but I just feel like it, it it just complicates the screen and this is really easy to understand. It won't be hard to, um, to, to find your start and end point with just this UI here. So I'm going to get to it today. Uh, that's my little demo. I like to start each stream with a demo and then after I get done demoing, then I get to working. And typically the stuff I work on in one session will be what I demo at the beginning of next day's session. So if you don't like watching somebody just type into their IDE for hours on end writing software and you just like to see the results just watch the starting point of my videos and I'll just demo at the very beginning so you can kind of get the gist of this project that I'm working on as I go uh, overall project has got some screens for creating animatable faces uh, <clears throat> It's got a screen for creating an interactive set of dialogue that the animated face will, will speak. <clears throat> it's got this latest screen that I'm working on, which is a way to quickly record audio that will be used for the character to speak. And I don't know why I always get hiccups when I start a session, but here I go again with my hiccups. I think it has something to do with posture and breathing and how I don't breathe normally when I'm talking. Let me see if I can just get rid of my hiccups. Oh, it's still there. It's still there. Really annoying. Let me see if I can get rid of it. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll just get rid of this second slider down here and its complication. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Oh, my wife just texted me. What she want, what she want? She's saying, good news, some flights that she wanted to book were pretty cheap. Uh...
Very cool. All right. Now, let's get working. Let's get going. Let's get going. Uh, this is the screen that I was on. Where's the, uh, or the dialogue I was working on was trim speech dialogue. And then here I've got this auto adjust slider container. I'll just get rid of it. Whoops, I feel like I missed something. If that's the container for the slider itself, then there's the auto adjust there. Okay, so I'll just yank that. Okay, so much simpler. Um, I'm gonna commit that because sometimes it's useful to have one commit just be the removal of a feature if you ever want to go back and put it back in. wireframe is a start and end label and I think I'll add those underneath so let's do it in a nice configurable way no nah, trim slider trim slider I don't know I will not use it for anything else that's that's the, the reason why I don't feel like passing our prop for like left label right label uh, let's just go directly into the trim speech slider. Okay, what if we do this first? Let's try the real easy way first. Really doesn't look good, but I could do a few things. So I could make it go vertically. I could just put a line break after each letter. Let's just see how that looks, because that, that might be real easy. Worst case is start, it's got five letters instead of three. So, whoops, not that, uh, BR, bam. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, then, so clearly that's uh, not really legible. But I don't know why you would adjust everything like that. I just don't know why you would do that. All right, that's not going to work. I, I can just tell even though it's I, I could maybe figure out how to make it not break the layout I really need it to be text that's outside of that button so for that we'll create a span inside a span is that even allowed of course it is span start font size. Uh, let's give this a style.
right. Thumb label. Position relative font size point three RM. Okay. Uh, needs a little more work, but getting there. Thumb label. Let's say point five RM. Ah, stop that. You know what I meant. Okay, that's that's better. And then we'll say the top will be underneath. Uh, two REM. One REM. One point three REM. Okay. And That's not bad. I think let's make it a little bit larger. I can't really read it. Oh, stop that. Come on. Six. Seven. And top, maybe a little bit more. Four, there we go. Okay, then. I don't know if I can do this just by centering the text. Text align center. No, that's not going to do it. The easiest way to do it might be to make make a two classes and then just offset one a little bit more. But this isn't bad. Let me just. Play with this for a bit. If we do right zero, does that do anything? No, it does nothing. Uh, let's take that one out. Left. Negative point oh point three REM. Yeah, so Okay, so you say here's how you do it. You do with two R E. M Why are you overriding my width? Why would you do that? Okay. Display inline block. Okay. And let's do, let's take out the left. Text align center. Cool, okay, now I'm getting it. And just so I can see what I'm playing with, let's turn the background color on. Just need to adjust the left. Oops, and that's just that looks pretty good. Just to make this a little more, uh, I guess, localization friendly for later. Let's go four. color. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
that's quite respectable. All right, so grab all that CSS. We take it and we put it down into thumb label. I'm happy that I didn't have to create like a thumb label left and thumb label right and make CSS that was coupled to the actual text there. Because if I'm going to localize it later, like if I want, um, I don't know, German or Spanish or something, the word lengths will be different and it would break layout. So this should be pretty good. All right, so the next thing to do, now that I've got this beautiful double thumb slider, is come up with uh, the actual wave data being showed in this gray box. There's, this is a widget here that I made a while back where it's a React component that takes samples from an audio file and displays basically this, this kind of thing. The waveform. I call it waveform visualizer. Um, so I'll write some code next that loads in the samples of the audio and displays them inside of this gray area here. And then after that, I mean, I should just take one step at a time, but then after that, it's gonna be um, having these vertical bars line up with wherever you drag the thumbs. So you'll be able to adjust the start and end point of uh, the speech. Okay. I'll do a commit since that was a conceptually together piece of work. Added labels to uh, trim slider. Pushing that off to GitHub. All right. So if I look at my dialogue, I can see here's, here's my component instance and I haven't passed anything to it. Uh, the way to do this is to pass in through props enough information that I could load in the samples then have just a some kind of loading state where after the samples come in I will go ahead and put them in a use state variable and uh, populate this uh, the, the properties of the waveform visualizer with uh, the loaded samples. So up here, I know that the prop I'm going to pass in is going to be take wav key, take wave key. What am I doing? Am I doing take wav key? I think I am. Yeah. Okay. And then come on, I'll do a use state for the samples. Not quite, not quite, not quite. Import use state. Got Copilot helping me out a little bit here, but it's not always right, you know? It's pretty good. It's pretty good at guessing what I'm trying to do and what might work for it, but uh, sometimes you just gotta write the code yourself. I want it to be float or null. Let's just do an empty array. Okay, and then, well, I guess it could be null. Yeah, null will stop it, it, stop the component from trying to render anything weird. Okay, so if we do that, samples down here can pass the samples. I will check to see if I regressed. Oh, oh yeah, I gotta pass the key. All right, so let's make the glue that passes the key. Uh, for that, I'll go up to the, where am, I, where am I going? Speech screen up to the top level. Uh, yeah, so the dialogue here. 
pass take wav key. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. I should go into some kind of use state variable after I come back from. Yeah, on finalize take, it's going to do set revision. It's going to do set modal dialog. Maybe I should put it in the revision. I gotta put it somewhere. I feel like it's too ephemeral to to just put it inside of a revision. Let's do a use state for it. Revisions are meant to be persisted and have undo and redo, and I, I just don't think I need it for that. So, let's see, what, what do I want to call it? Const. Um, active wav uh, take wav key. And that's probably fine. That means take wav key also needs to accept null. Uh, too much stuff. Do I need all this? Let's get rid of some tabs. Okay, take wav key, we'll let it be string or null. Okay, so then we go up to uh, it's on on finalize take, and I will also pass in uh, set active take web key, and uh, let's see, that's going to be in take interactions. string a function. Okay. So then, um, okay. I'm compiling again. Good. So that brings up the dialog. Nothing's broken. So let's do the loading in of the audio inside of the dialog. effect to have some initialization code occur when the component mounts. You can just fill out the basics here first. Okay. If not is open, just return. Uh, I'll say also if not is open or uh, not take wav key uh, wav key then we'll just exit so at this point we will know we have to perform the initialization that happens not just on mount but whenever the the dialog is opened again so this will handle both um, let me see. I need 
need to load the wave out of persistent storage. We've got some code that does that. I just forgot how it goes. Uh, speech. Okay, so this will get the bytes. I've got some code elsewhere that just loads the wave. Uh, let's see, load. Load take no. Uh, I've got that where uh, there's a button that you click on to play a wave, and that this is a big project. <laughs> I keep forgetting where things are. Okay, play take wave. And this, okay, it's in, in take interaction. So I pass the take web key and that will play it. Um, what I should do is just create another function inside of take interactions that loads in the samples and everything I need. Uh, da -da -da. So let's go over to take interactions. Just don't pretend you know what I'm going to do next. Next port. Uh, load, take, wave, wav, key, string. And let's return an audio buffer. And then I can just Wave bytes to, oh yeah, okay, so it's these two lines here. And then just return that. Then down here, let's be dry, let's be dry. There we go. And then, What's, oh, because I got to do a promise. This is a, a promise to an audio buffer, not the audio buffer, because it's an async function. Cool. <clears throat> so I've got a nice reusable function here to load in a, um, a WAV file from my persistent storage. Come back to, where was I at? Trim speech dialogue. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm going to want to just save the whole audio buffer here. Const audio buffer set audio buffer. Yeah. Okay. So then we'll say const next audio buffer equals not what you're trying to do. Load take wav. Then we return uh, that. Okay, take wav key. Let's do an await. Oh, can't yet. Uh, let's do it the old fashioned way with uh, promises. declare those setters as dependencies. It's a, a thing that I will get build warnings about. Okay. So looking at this, I've got begin sample, zero, in sample. Okay. Let's have uh, 
this be audio buffer and then uh, do I get sample count from this? It could be implied by length. Oh wait, no, length is, is the number of samples. Okay, yeah. That works. Okay. Then later on I'll, I'll put the time markers in and those will give me my two um, left and right vertical bars. But let's see if this will actually load in sample data. It does. That's pretty good. I do feel like there should be a way to just hide the needle. Let me see if I already wrote code for that. The needle is supposed to be there for showing playback. Um, okay, so waveform visualizer. Let's go check that out real quick. Okay, so a needle sample, no, it could be null. Okay, draw. Yeah, I said if it's null, we're not going to draw it. Okay, cool. So I come back here and just set the needle to be null. Then... Yeah, so needle's not there now. So the next thing would be to put um, start and end vertical lines. Okay. The other thing I'll need to do is, is make the width of this inset by a little bit so that it's possible for these chunky thumbs to be used to bring the uh, the start line all the way to the leftmost point in this in the waveform uh, let me put the lines on first though okay so the time markers um, what's the expected format of the time marker right here marker type primary sample no to sample no if I want to specify a range but I don't have to specify a range and I can put a description if I want a label right there on the uh... okay I got it I got it it's fine so mainly I care about two sample now. Okay. So let's do some more use state const um, left time marker. And this is going to be time waveform time marker. And uh, doo -doo -doo. better way to do it is we'll just have one array with time markers okay and we'll just set it to that by default and this will this will be uh, time markers but just pass it in what what Oh, it's an array. There we go. All right, so the trim slider, right now it's hard coded a bit. I need to update left and right values. And let's do that.
That's some good guessing from Copilot. Uh, to do analyze for default positions of left and right monitors. Okay. Um, okay, and then if I set them down here, left, ah. And maybe let's not be so generic. Let's do start value. Yeah, because it's yeah. Okay, it's a little bit easier to read and understand for me. Making it multi-line because I can see my, my prop values here getting wider and more complex. Let's do update after start change and we'll do yeah next start value. What else do we need? We need uh, the audio buffer and um, set start value. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes Copilot is just on it. Here, let's see if we can guess the rest of this one. It did. It's good at following patterns, even ones that I set. So, update after start change. Let's see, I, I, I want to watch it guess. It'll probably be way off, but. Yeah, that's one thing I have to do. You're right about that. It's not the main thing, though. Okay. No, actually, that, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right at all. That's yeah, not right. So... Wait a minute, what's, what's the issue there? First off, I don't need that. Get rid of that. Why do you not like set time markers? Oh, okay, no, no problem, no problem. I gotta go back up and fix that function to match, okay. So, all right, so it's the danger of using Copilot is sometimes you can be so amused with its antics that it can slow you down. Um, okay, this is a better guess that it did. Set start value, next start value, set time markers. Uh, not bad. Okay, but it's gonna be a little different than this. Um, Let's say const next time markers. Uh, I'm going to have to. You know what? It's easier to just do this with one fun function. Do next start value, next end value, 
set start value, set end value. Let's just do a one friggin' function. Oh, I thought of an even better way to do it. Okay. I'm annoyed with all my restarts. I'll keep this even simpler. Set start value, next start value. Okay. Yeah. Okay, do that first. Then I'll do a use effect. They'll just be looking for changes to, um, yeah, those two. Good guess. That's true. That's true. Okay. So is it the durations that I need? I don't know if that's true. I think it's the length that I need. Um, yeah. Okay, start a sample now. Equals uh, length times start value. Don't need to divide it by 100, do I? No. Oh, wait, yeah. Start value divided by 100. So it'll be a value between 0 and 100. And let's do it. Yeah. Okay. And new waveform. Is it new? I don't think it is. I think it's just. I don't think it's a class. Is it a class? An interface. Okay. So here, let's just grab these. Come back over. Okay. So it's gonna be marker type. Marker type primary. Sample no, start sample no. Good, except I don't need any description. I'll leave it there for the moment. Okay. check it out all right so I see one on the zero it is moving with me that's pretty cool the end one oh it, it was there it was just off off the left side okay so if I go all the way to here it's just one past is that what's going on take those descriptions off can I do null yeah So I'm just thinking about this a little bit. Um, like the coolest thing would be 
that as you drag it, it updates as well. It'll take a little bit of work. It might be like a 20 minute detour, but uh, it would be a lot more effective. So if when I was dragging this, the line above was moving, it would do two things. One, it would communicate to the user, oh, this, is, this button is linked to this line. You'd immediately know when you started dragging instead of when you let go. Uh, the second thing is, if you're trying to get that line in one very specific spot, it's going to be much easier to, to, to see it. Because now you kind of get a guess. So I think I really do want it to be the drag event rather than the mouse up event that causes the line above to reposition. Hey, did so much work though around this design. I was thinking, I don't want all the drag events to fire up because that's, that's wasteful. But on the other hand, computers are just really friggin' fast. So it's not that wasteful. Why don't I do this? Uh, changes on drag equals true then come over to here and we'll pass in a prop okay. oh that's layout measurements I want uh, to go in the props. Okay. Okay, where's my drag? that long at all. If changes on drag uh, on left change. You don't have to do that. I already calced it. Okay. See if that does it. Kinda uh, weird. I messed up on something. What did I mess up on? Oh, that's the thumb pause. I don't want to pass the thumb pause. I want to calculate value from the thumb pause. Okay.
const uh, value equals yes okay and this will be value That's better. That's much better. Okay, now the other thing to do. Ah, uh, how could I have lost the. Oh, I know why. Wait. Maximum update de depth exceeded. Something's off. Something's not good. At least two things aren't good. First thing, drag this around. Am I getting that error message again? That might have been a stale error message from previous code changes. But somehow I lost the, the, the bounds on this, so I wasn't... Before I made those changes, I was able to set a stop and start on these. Uh, okay. Does that just get lost? Let's turn this off and see if that is the difference between it, it stopping or not. Maybe I already broke something previous. No, it's stopping there. Oh, but then I try it again and it doesn't work. It goes through. Okay. So the new thing might have been me setting the new values of uh, left value and right value. And they're not also constraining in the trim slider uh, the boundaries of how far they can drag. code is not getting called. Okay, let's set this back to true. You know, this is like a, it's a special case slider. I don't need to generalize it so much. Let's just simplify the code inside the slider so it always changes on drag and fix as we go. I don't need to pretend that it's like a, a reusable widget. It's just going to be coupled to this one screen, and that should simplify the code a bit. Uh, so get rid of uh, changes on drag. 
and we'll just assume that we will change it on drive. That also means that I need to set, I need to update the layout measurements each time that it drags. So this is dragging, was dragging stuff. I don't think this is, is important anymore. a new one underneath of it to replace it. Use effect. See if left thumb pause changes. Oh yeah, if not, it's left dragging in return. Okay. Yeah, but I'm only gonna change the thumb paws if it's dragging. Okay, so let's just get rid of that. And uh, the value. The value. Get rid of this guy. Uh, Got to add a few more dependencies here. Left change, set layout measurements. Uh, I guess layout measurements too. Okay, I can delete. This code beneath, I can simplify greatly. Lots of messages. I don't like all those messages.
put a syntax error in there on purpose just because I wanted this thing to stop. But it didn't stop, did it? Here, let's refresh. There we go. So let's think this through a bit. Do I need these use effects? Do I actually do I actually need these use effects? Um, so I, I could just make this all happen in response to uh, to dragging. That's probably cleaner, simpler. So let's do that. left value used for anything else it's not so let's just simplify this okay then I feel like I, I just might as well delete this and see if I can get copilot to pick up the pattern use effects go back into the speech screen now let's try this again okay it's not doing the runaway events anymore still not constraining. There you constrained. Although it might just be, oops, maximum update depth again, okay. It might be that those are just set and not updating. So, like that yeah it's just not updating these to the new values okay that kind of makes sense uh, so I must be passing the wrong numbers into constraint or something like that So there I made a small fix it. When I drag this all the way to right, it'll keep that guy visible. Okay, so what else? What else do I need to fix here with that constraint? I'm not setting the layout measurements. Okay, set. Measurements. Okay, I think this will do it. Bring it there. Bam. Okay, cool. 
Cool. I don't like that warning. Ugh. The hell, man. That worked. That did not. Okay, so this continues to work. This sometimes works. Some kind of, wow, so weird. For a moment, it was doing good. Yeah, okay, let's see. Once I break through, it's done. Huh. So I keep trying and then I get through and then I can get through all I want. Okay, there. So in some cases, it sets the constraints. Wait a minute. Oh, I think I want to get it. No. Huh. I hate having to go back and debug that because that, that was supposed to be done code. Um, Anyways, I'm going to take a little bathroom break and be back in a moment. Shabazz, he's upset, but he's always upset. She's probably fine. Don't draw attention. 
damage. Just want to be with me. Push yourself. 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 Push
attention. I don't care if she's in control. Sure. Sliders. 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 All right. So I know. Did I see something else weird happen there? Yeah. If you click on on one of these and move them, it, it adjusts the other. And I know why. I think I know why. Oops, sorry. Because the 
position comes in. Here with the left value and right value. Um, so if I, if I don't put in on left change. Don't put in on right change. Okay, and this this actually will stop and okay. So it's that passing the value back up thing. Um, Do I need, well, what do I need this to do? A lot of my troubles come from me wanting to use some values here and not have this code execute each time based on those values changing. Like I want two kinds of dependencies. I want one dependency which causes the, the code to execute and the other kind of dependency is just accessible value. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on here. So I could move the this change stuff and the constraints into this. I just oh man. A lot of my troubles come because I need to mix these style of events like a you know, browser API, JavaScript, add event listener, um, and remove event listener with the React events. I need to call these, but I need them to have I need the callbacks for these, but I need them to have all the information. I'll stop calling this mount. It's not really the mount anymore.
What about this guy here? Does it have anything to constrain the left and right values? Passing left and right values here. Those are coming from props. some stuff out of here and make it simpler. Okay, so let's do use effect. And honestly, let's just do, this will be the map. So for this, I can do left dragging. And set is right dragging. Okay, so that simplifies this a bit. Just this thing just is out of control. Maybe, can I get this to update without the, the positions changing? Oh, this is tricky. just for layout measurements. Right, okay. So this, maybe I can. Simplify as well. So 
what about just update, update layout measurements? And just don't try to calculate uh, thumb positions or Yeah, and I'll make the constraints be a, a separate use state variable. So there's my on resize. Let me do uh, basically this. I'm just making use effects that have a, a tighter scope. And they're not going to be affected by every little thing. Then I can just more reasonably deal with it all. There's already a function called that. Um, and what, really? Well, let's take a look at that. Yeah. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. what they are. This thing up here, let's just delete it and then I'll add in what I actually need. Okay. And then the layout measurements, I'll get rid of that. Um, let's, let's call this thumb constraints. Usefulness of having a separate structure here is that uh, I can update this guy more often than I do this one, and the code that uh, is uh, responding to the layout measurements changing doesn't have to be hassled with. Okay, let's get rid of that. Make an equivalent function for thumb constraints in it. Thumb constraints. I can pass in. The, the two values too. Yeah, I'll have them. I will have them. Okay, so we'll say, uh, what is it? Left value number right value. Uh, but then, you know, you'd need to have, nah, okay, just do it this way. Dumb constraints, and then just do zeros. Call it good.
No, it, let's update them independently too. Thumb constraint. Let's do min x, max x, and then that, that will simplify other things as well. Okay. said that the the max is going to be right thumb plus minus thumb width plus all this. The min what's the min going to be? I call it container width minus padding width minus thumb width. Um, actually the the left min and the right max are always going to be the same, so I can keep those in these layout measurements. Eh, let's not though. But padding width I can put inside of here, that'll save me some extra code that does exactly the same thing. So we'll say uh, padding width. Put that there. And this we say padding width. And then inside of here, I can grab the padding width again. And I can have this be set to Container width minus padding width minus thumb width. Okay, then let's do function. and left thumb pause, pass and layout measurements, return thumb constraint. Grab these guys. Okay, min x is going to be the left thumb pause. Right min x, no, 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 down here. Right min x equals left thumb plus plus thumb width plus math round half of, okay, cool. Max x equals Right, max x container width minus padding width. Okay.
Okay, so this is this is the left thumb constraint. Here, back up, 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 back up. Delete that. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, the next should be just padding width here. For the left, left max x should be container width minus padding width minus thumb width. No, that would be uh, the in initial setting, but it's not correct for this. That has to come from the right thumb position minus that. Okay, cool. And then I guess I don't need container width here. Okay, then I don't like this space. Okay, so then here, calc thumb pass, I can do uh, padding width. Actually, uh, it's just going to be ah. okay. So I have to pass in my own, or just done with. an applicable thumb constraint. I just don't need a left and a right anymore. Okay, calc value from thumb pass. I'm just going to assume that the thumb pass that is passed in is already clamped. That will greatly simplify this function. Clamp, and then let's see, the value it wants to use is this right here. So let's just get rid of this clamp. is going to be the same as padding width. Okay. And this is garbage. Let's just let's just yank this. Okay. This don't need it anymore. 
Okay. Const lift. Yep. Yep. Okay. Do I need the right thumb here? I don't think I do. No, they're both the same size. Okay, so that sets the layout measurements. Now, I can maybe create another use effect for, yeah, actually, yeah. So let's see, let's see. Okay, um, set right thumb constraint, calc right thumb constraint from Okay, so I have to, wait, where's left thumb boss getting set? Let's just recalculate the thumb boss. Or, huh. Here's a part I have to be careful because okay, here's the trick. The value can be changed as a prop from the container component or the parent component and that should cause a recalculation of the, the thumb positions. But the thumb positions can also be changed and that should cause a recalc of the values. So if I set up things that respond to both of them changing, um, it'll go in a loop. It'll go in a loop. So I need to prevent that loop. I need to get clear on, on what's going to set what. Um, I think this isn't bad though.
Don't need to do this. Drag X and then what am I looking to pass in? Layout measurements, thumb width, and yeah, that constraint. Okay. Then if I change the value. Don't set the thumb pause. Just let it come through the props. Okay. I think that's clean. I think that's not calling back on itself in some weird way. So my, my overall design thought here was just break up all these use effects so that they don't have so many dependencies. Okay, what else am I calling here? Anything else? In here. Yeah, that's cool. Here, left thumb pause. Also, set, all right. Thumb constraint, set left, thumb constraint, set left thumb pause, set right thumb pause. Okay. Get rid of that. And there's going to be bugs. There's going to be bugs. Let's just work through them. Okay. So where's that? Yes, yeah, it feels like it needs a reload. Okay, so first thing is the position here is off. So right thumb pause needs to get set. Okay, so what if I do this? And that causes issues. Um,
I do wonder why it didn't set this. Because I do have a value being passed into it of 100 to start. So I would like to know what's happening there. true. It's passed in as props. Left value is infinity. <laughs> okay. That's odd. That might be a problem with uh, the parent component. Initial start value and end value should be zero in a hundred. When would that be true? When would that be true? Oh, it could it could get screwed up in um where? Hmm. I come here, start value, still screwed up. Okay, that, that part's correct. Okay, so then I should get something here. Maybe I already missed it though. Uh, I haven't called on left change or on right change yet. Nothing's initialized yet. Uh, okay, cool. And let's see. Let's let's just look at the order that everything happens. Okay, those may have already gotten called. calculating the measurements for the first time 
but I'm guessing that it already called some of the other things. I'm gonna hit play and come back through this fresh. I'm gonna hit play a whole bunch of times. What? All those redraws? Why? Jesus. This is the very first run through at left value is zero, right value is a hundred. All of these things should be set to initial values. So zero, zero, false, false, layout measurements, that, left thumb constraint, that, yeah. Okay, default values for everything. Probably still default values for everything. It's just the second run through. True. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Now it's rendering something down there. I get that. This isn't setting the layout measurements. Okay, it's calculating the layout measurements, not setting them. Okay, that's probably gonna be it. Still messed up, still messed up. Let's go back, set all the breakpoints again, go through this. Okay. Trim slider, bam. I still didn't perform the on resize, not the initial one. So I do need to do that. Okay. Uh, let's just clear all the breakpoints. Constraints will be messed up. That's fine. Okay, there will be a resize here, but it's coming a little late. Okay, now I'm starting to see it. So 
So the resize event happens. Let's see what the layout measurements look like now. Still messed up. Okay. Let's do this. Refresh layout measurements. Okay, and let's just call it that. And down here, well, we will go ahead and refresh it. Okay, cool. Let's get a fresh reload, come back in. Don't need to handle that yet, or don't need to debug that yet. So let's just do the ones I care about. Not healthy yet. Okay, so it'll get called again though, right? I think it will. I think it will. Okay, then left value, zero. Right value, 100. Layout measurements still fucked. So those will get kind of weird values. Uh, okay, but then this gets called. Okay, now I've got good layout measurements. No, I don't. I don't have them yet. The fuck, man. Still don't have them. Let's hope they come in later. Okay, how about now? Now I got them. Okay. So now I'm going to set the constraints. It's not a good time to set the constraint though. Like if I don't have the layout measurements, I, I kind of don't want to be setting any of this stuff and I want the event to fire later. Again, I'm getting this problem of some of these dependencies I want to trigger the code to execute and others I just want to get fresh values when the use effect code is triggered. Okay, so my layout measurements are good. Left value is zero. Okay, are you, okay. Maybe you will set it correctly because now I have a new thumb position. Okay, now I set the left. Okay, this has some chance of doing something right. Oh, here, let's get rid of all 
this stuff. you thank you thank you okay almost got it god damn this is a pain in the ass widget Says. Not bad. Not bad. I think I finally figured it out. Okay, the rest is getting the layout correct here. The other thing I saw was that it looked like a, I didn't set initial values for the the. Those uh, damn those uh, markers. So let's go back to here. Suppose I need to be able to have a dependency on that as well. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, come over here, refresh. Speech, bring you in. Okay, good start. Now, This could be with calc 100% minus uh, I want to see something that doesn't seem to work probably because the canvas size okay here hold on let's do calc 100% minus and whatever the thumb size is times two maybe something like that what is my thumb size thumb with one rem okay come back to here and say minus two rem just try that to start okay we're getting there doesn't want to do any live updates with that canvas base thing. Uh, what about margin left? One REM. Okay, that's better. Okay. So 
let's do one. Margin left. One REM. Stay constant. Pretty constant. Okay. So my width is wrong. Let's play with it some more. Point six. Okay, and then the margin left. Closer. Okay, it's damn close. That's pretty good. That might be perfect. Okay. Hit margin left, 0.4 RM. I think that'll do it. But let's see how well it resizes. Well, okay, that was a lot of work. Now I need some kind of audio playback. It gives me an idea if it's if it's the right trimming or not. Um, let's do the test button first. I'm going to go over to SL Web Audio and see if I already wrote a function to write uh, to uh, play a range. I do. So I got it based on time and duration, which is fine. Yeah, okay. buffer and they start start value or do we have start sample no I guess 
start value and end value will do fine. Um, yeah. Start percent. And percent. Okay, and we'll do uh, no, 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 let's do first off, let's clean all this garbage up. So this is gonna be speech screen. Yep, const duration equals So, yeah, that, that sounds right. Okay. So then play, audio buffer range. Is that what's expected? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh, and in that, do I also have stop all? I do. somewhere. Fine. The thing with F's is they have this trailing f at the beginning that's easy to cut off. Fine. 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 Ooh, there's a little clip there you can cut out. Fine. Okay. That would do it. That would be trimming right there. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's do another one. Also, I can tell that when I do an is open, I want to clear some of these values. So it wasn't open, then it becomes open. I want to clear. So that 
start value zero. Set end value one hundred, and then let's leave that to do there. So what's this one? Yeah, I'm watching a band. Have to get it perfect yeah I'm watching a band. so that would be pretty useful trimming right there because there's a lot of empty silence at the beginning yeah I'm watching a band. okay yeah I'm watching a band. yeah I'm watching a band. Yeah, 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 that's how it'll be done. Okay, so that's pretty good. Let's bring another one in, make sure it clears those values out. Yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, I do want to set the samples to clear this out before it comes to the dialogue. So for that, Yeah, I think this works pretty well. Um, I could make this bar a little bit closer. And what is the thing that's that's putting space between it? Because when I look up there, I see a little bit of space here, a little bit of space. I guess it could be this height three. Yeah. The thing above has got a little bit of a margin though, a bottom margin to it. Looks like it does anyways. Okay, I will do margin bottom. Zero. That did nothing. So maybe it's inside this thing. Does that have some kind of margin or stuff? Let's see. Okay. Margin. Zero. Padding. Zero. Is it the height? No, I don't think that's it. No. Okay, what about the thing beneath? Yeah. Okay. 
let's just reduce the height. So if I do two, I also have to fiddle with the thumbs. Zero? Yeah, it looks like zero. Um, yeah, okay, so that would give me a pretty snug thing there. Um, and then we give get rid of those. I think that those are already zero. Margin, bottom, 0.5 REM, 2 REM, okay, 1 REM, there we go, okay, so in the container, we go with height 2, margin, bottom 1. feasible. Um, the only thing I could do is make it autoplay each time you move the thing, but if it's a longer line then it shouldn't play like a whole lengthy line, so I'll keep it as it is. This needs to pass. Um, what do I want to pass exactly? Do I want to pass anything? Maybe I just update the wave. I pass? I could pass the percentages, I could pass the modified audio buffer. I could pass the sample positions for the range, I could pass the time range. I think 
think let's pass. Start sample no duration. Not duration. Um, sample count. Okay. You know what? That can come later, maybe. Don't really need that. And the audio buffer, start value, end value, on complete. Okay. Uh, this should be disabled. Equals uh, samples length. Just uh, declare it up top. Is next disable. Let's see up here. Const is next disabled equals uh, not audio buffer. Uh, no, not all that other stuff. Just that. And then on. Let's do on. Click next. Okay. We start percent and percent. complete function okay and we're gonna pass in uh, well wrong but fine okay const sample rate equals yep and then let's use uh, these utility functions I've got. Under sample util. So let's... No, that's not actually that useful. Um, yeah, it's not useful. So we say... Uh, Start sample no equals uh, audio, uh, let's do this. This will be sample count start sample no equals start percent times times 100, no, divided by 100, times sample count, and then I want to do a math round on the whole thing. 
uh, actually a math floor. Okay. Const. Uh, oh, I'm already using the word sample count. This would be squiggly somewhere. No, no red squiggly just because uh yeah this is just ignoring the parameters passed in. Yeah it does make me think though. set an active audio buffer because if I do that then I can pass it on to the next dialogue and if I am going to have an active audio buffer I might as well send a trimmed audio buffer Audio buffer, audio buffer. Okay. So, do I already have a function for this? If I do, let's use that. Create audio buffer for range. This is it. This is it right here. Okay, come back to here. We're gonna do that. Let's do uh Next, uh, trimmed audio buffer equals, okay, but this should be the start time and range duration. And we're just gonna go with duration. for this.
Okay, and this is start time, range duration. Make sure that's right. Yeah. That's pretty clean. Just to make sure it's working right, let's uh, play the audio buffer once before moving on to the next dialogue. Um, Buffer, and then we're just going to get the audio buffer from here. And I'll grab this out of. Let's see. To do, delete. Import, uh, play audio buffer from SL Web Audio. These guys come up above. All right, let's see how it goes. So I'm going to do this yeah I'm watching a band yeah I'm watching a band can okay, click next yeah I'm watching a band that works back to the speech screen that but there will have to be something like uh, let's see set active audio buffer audio buffer and that probably shouldn't be there I'm gonna leave it for now these finalizing eh. yeah that would that would help me later on maybe
Hmm. This one will take audio buffer equals finalizing audio buffer. So that's the glue between the dialogues. Get status, get commit A. Uh, trim, speech, dialogue. Passes a trimmed audio buffer to next dialogue. And I gotta use the right homonym. Push that. This is probably a great point to stop, to be honest. Okay. Cool. Good. All right. This is where I'm going to stop the stream. A pretty nice stopping point. Uh, I'll keep going tomorrow. All right. Stopping the stream. Stopping the stream. Stopping it.